Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I've last updated you. If you're not following my Instagram, David Rowley 8 then you probably don't know that I've joined a new team, Keta FA. I left Kalantan in the mid-season window. And this video is just going to be summarizing what's happened to me in the last few months and how everything's going. So at the start of the year, as you know, I joined Kalantan FA. They play in the second division in the Premier League and they are a historic club. They've got a big fan club and the goal, the target was to go straight back up into the Super League, but many problems came and that did not eventuate. So before I joined Kalantan FA, a couple ex-players, they told me, oh, David, don't go to Kalantan. I asked them for their advice because they said they had problems with getting their salary in the past. And then I talked to another couple people and they said, you know, the team wants to go back up. Um, they've reduced their budget, but they're more responsible. So I said, all right, let's just go, let's just go there. Um, and I made the decision to go there in the end. I went there on a very small salary, but the main thing for me was last season I was getting a very good salary, but I didn't play, I had two operations. I broke my wrist in training, the ball got shot and snapped it. And then the second operation was due to a small meniscus tear. So I got that in a tackle in a game and then they just trimmed a little bit of my meniscus. And yeah, now I'm back, I'm strong. So last year was, was bad in terms of in terms of playing, but salary was good. So I joined Kalantan and I played the majority of games there, but there was financial problems. I don't want to go too much into it, but yeah, salaries weren't getting paid. So one foreigner left and then at the mid season window, all the foreigners left because, you know, they can't play for free. Without foreigners, it's very difficult in a team because you're versing other teams with four or five foreigners. So a lot of the games were only playing with one or two foreigners and there was... The games were very close. We were drawing a lot, but if we would have had the whole team and salary was coming on time, everyone would be happy and it makes such a better environment. I think we would have been near the top of the table because we did have a good team, a lot of young, talented players, a lot of young local uh, players that are playing for the Malaysian youth team. So it's unfortunate what happened. A couple of coaches got sacked, really good coaches as well. So it's a shame what happened um, with Kalantan. So guys, that's why I tell you, for some of you that are interested in coming over to Asia and playing football, sometimes it's better to find a team that does not have problems with salary and you know you're gonna get it every month instead of going to a team where they give you this high salary but then you have problems getting it. It's like what happened to Perlis FA, my friend was playing there, my French friend, he was on a really good salary but then the club folded. Now he has to go to FIFA and it complicates things so it's always good to get a team which is responsible and that you can get your salary each month. So Kalantan FA at the, at the moment are near the bottom of the table. They're trying to escape relegation. Also because a lot of players in the past went to FIFA to complain about salaries, directors, etc. FIFA deducted three points from Kalantan. So that was another blow. Also Football Malaysia, they put a penalty on Kalantan, so they only allowed Kalantan to sign one foreigner during the mid-season transfer window. So right now they're playing with one foreigner compared to other teams which have four or five. So it's very difficult for the coach there, Usri, but he's doing a very good job with these young players because they're drawing against big teams like Johor, etc. The positive thing for this team is that there's a lot of young players and they're now getting game time. You know, in many uh, other teams, there's not many young players that are always starting. So you'll only find one or two young players in a team. 
that are starting, but in Kalantana, it's the majority of young players, so they're getting good game experience, which they probably wouldn't get at other clubs. So that's really good for them. So the foreigners that I was playing with at Kelantan, now they have moved on to different places. So Mustafa Zazai, he recently signed with the biggest team in Cambodia, Phnom Penh. So he's doing well for himself. And then Flavio, also he's gone to Indonesia and he's scoring a lot of goals there and doing very well for himself. And that's what I say, with football, it can change like that. So you've always got to be ready, you've got to train hard. Flavio, he was always doing extra work. Same with Mustafa, in the gym, getting ready. Just because things are going bad doesn't mean you can't personally improve your performance. Despite the financial problems, overall my experience at Kalantan was really, really good. I met so many good uh, people, my teammates were very friendly, it was like a, a small country town, not like you're in a big city. Also really good food, nasi caribou, Men went to many different restaurants there, tried the different food, which you should do if you're living in a, another country and playing football there. It's a shame when I see foreigners that come to Malaysia and they don't really experience the culture, they don't try the food because honestly the food in Malaysia is some of the best in the world. You've got the, you know, the mix between Chinese, Indian and Malay. So it's quality and you should definitely experience that. So moving back to the football, due to the financial situation at the mid-season transfer window, I had to leave the team. So I actually got four offers in the mid-season window, three from Super League clubs and one from a Premier League club. And in the end, I decided to join Keta FA because I spoke to a few people and they said that the coach here is very intelligent. He understands football and how it should be played. And this really affected my decision. And also that the club is financially stable, which is what I needed at the time, financial stability. So in the end, I decided to join Keta FA uh, for the rest of the season. So when I left Kalantan, I had to move all my stuff first to Kuala Lumpur and then later again to Kedah. So that took two or three trips. So I was on the road for many hours, maybe a couple days in total. So when I go on these long road trips, I like to download podcasts onto my phone that I can listen to in the car. So one guy that has a really good channel on YouTube is Tom Bilyeu and he invites so many good speakers you know, on the top of their field and they give such good advice. So I download these um, videos into uh, audio format and then I listen to, to them in the car. So check them out. He's got many good, many good people, businessmen, sport athletes, everything. So my role here at Kedah is to play as defensive midfield and how it works in the team is we've got a very attacking team so a lot of players will go up, our right or left back will sometimes go up, overlap and if we don't score then the other team are going to counter and as a defensive midfielder the first thing that I got to do is delay the attack which all uh, good defensive midfielders should do and then wait for the other players to come back if they don't, then try and stop the attack um, and tackle as best as I can. So that's what I've been doing in this team and also winning a lot of headers and winning second balls, getting the ball from the defense and then passing it on. I'm really enjoying playing this position even though I don't get much opportunity to score goals. You know, in Malaysia, I tell you guys, for those that want to come over here and play, the most important thing in Malaysia is scoring goals. If you score goals, all people love you, all fans love you, everyone loves you. But, you know, the coach brought me in, so my position, my role, I need to stay disciplined and stick to it. Be more defensive and hold the shape, which is the most important thing at the end of the day. Also, like I said before, one of the best ways to improve on your game is to analyze your performance. So every game I watch two or three times to see where I can improve, what I could have done better in certain situations. And I've learned a lot from this. So for you guys out there that want to improve your level, improve your performance, whatever level you're playing at, 
it's important that you're analyzing your games. Even if you get your brother, your sister, your friend to record the game on some shitty camcorder, it's better than not having that. So you can look at yourself and say, okay, yeah, this I should have done better or I need to improve on my turns. And you'll grow so much as a player because many players don't do this. I know I've asked many, many of my teammates in Malaysia that, um, that have played with me. I said, do you watch your games? I say to the young players, do you watch your games? And they say, no. I said, you should be watching so you can improve. And then when you've analyzed your performance, you can train more on the things that you need to be working on. If you're terrible at shooting, go practice your shooting. If you're terrible at passing, practice your passing. If you're bad at long balls, practice long balls. Simple as that. You know, the best player I've played with in my life was Kim Do Hyun from South Korea in my team at Negri. And he had played many caps for his national team. He played in the Premier League. He played in the K League, the top division. He was a superstar there. And I was watching him how he kicks the ball, left and right foot, long balls, perfect. Not with so much power, but with just technique, just like a golf shot, bop, bop. And yeah, this guy, he's now playing in, he's 36 or 37 and he's playing in America in the second division for a team called Indy 11, they're top of the table. If you're from America, then you should go check him out. Go to a game if you're living in, in that city and tell him I said hi. But I said to him one training, I said, Kim, what's your secret? Why are you so good at these long balls? And then he showed me a little bit of technique, but he said, David, there's no secret. I've practiced this thousands of times. So guys, practice, practice, practice. That is the most important thing for improving. Now, just back to Keta FA before I finish. So with Keta FA, there are four more league games remaining. And then we've got also the final of the FA Cup on the 27th of July in Kuala Lumpur at the National Stadium. That's gonna be a massive game. 50, 60, 70,000 people will be there. So if you want to watch any of these games, I'm gonna leave the, uh, I'll make a little, a little picture of when the game times are and I'll tell you the different ways that you can watch it. So after the FA Cup and the regular season, we've also got another big cup called the Malaysian Cup, and that's another six games minimum. So yeah, that's what's happening with Keta. That's everything that's happening with me. I've now moved to Keta, living in this new place. So very happy to be here in a law setter and yeah, we'll try to get some more videos out about how you can improve as a footballer and we'll talk to you guys soon. So thanks again for watching and until next time, ciao.